your guitar only had four frets and it only had two strings, would it be easier to improvise over jazz chord changes? Well, you might be limited in what you can play if you did that, but yes, it would be much easier. And limiting our notes in this way to something very strict and very specific can help immensely with navigating keys and chords changing when we are improvising. So we're gonna do an exercise like that in this lesson. Most beginner jazz lessons will teach you to play a scale over a chord progression, that a scale that works over the whole chord progression or a scale that works over a chord. This is great to work on this stuff, but what we're gonna work on here is we're gonna to get to the heart of what is most difficult about working on jazz or any type of music that is changing keys within the chord progression. We're gonna work on targeting and switching our note selection as we play and we're gonna do it in a very easy and accessible way that is great for beginners. I first learned how to target chord changes and think about chords changing in a pr progression and following them by studying the melody of the tune Tenor Madness by Sonny Rollins. So that's exactly what we're gonna do in this lesson. I'm gonna show you how I had kind of a big light bulb appear above my head when I was playing this tune a long time ago and wanting to figure out how to change my note selection through changes and melodies are a great way to investigate that because the melodies are following the chord changes. So we're gonna look at this with Tenor Madness. Let's dive in. I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com where I have courses that help guitarists express themselves more freely and confidently through musicianship skills like improvisation, fretboard theory, technique, arranging, chord melody, improvisation, and more. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and follow. I have new lesson videos every week. First, I'm gonna teach you the chord shapes for this simple blues progression that we're gonna use for the tune Tenor Madness. This is just a blues that can be applied to thousands and thousands of songs, very common progression. And this is a very simple version of the blues. I'm gonna show you shell voicings here through it just so you have the shapes. If you wanna know more about shell voicings and how to play them on any tune, you can check out the link in the description to a video that I have about that. This is the first shape and this is B flat dominant seven. This is gonna be important because the notes in here are gonna be what the melody is outlining. So you're gonna see them overlap. So this is the chord for B flat dominant seven or just B flat seven, same thing. E flat seven is this shape, okay? Then it goes back to B flat seven for two measures. Then it goes to E flat seven again for two measures. Then back to B flat seven for two measures, okay? Then it goes to C minor seven. Here's the shell voicing of it. And it goes to F7, here's the shell voicing. Same one we did a whole step down for E flat, and then back to B flat, so pretty simple. So maybe you can, if you want a comp over this, you can do this kind of swing feel. Just as a side tip here, I like to emphasize the two and four. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and play the one and three really light. So those are the chord shapes. Here's the melody of Tenor Madness. I'm just gonna demonstrate it over the chord progression so you just hear what the tune sounds like. That is the melody. Now let's dig into investigating what's happening in it so we can improvise with it. The part of the melody we're gonna play with is just the first eight measures. We're not gonna worry about the other part because the first part of it here targets this third. Remember the shape that we learned, that top note of the B flat seven chord is the first note in the melody. Okay, well then the top note of the E flat seven chord is the note of the melody when the chord changes. So we have So it is outlining, certainly targeting this top note of each of these, and playing around with that. So I would, if you wanna do this on this tune, like it helped me a lot, which is why I'm showing you this, but you can try to find your own examples on any tune, because like I said, the melodies often target the chord changes, but this is just such a great way to get into this if you have not improvised over chord tones and scales and keys that are changing yet. So I would get this down. Just 
just that part. The other part of the melody on the guitar is really hard. Kind of because there's a shift and a stretch in there. You can learn that too if you want to learn the whole melody. But just this is what we're going to improvise with next. Okay, so memorize those and then let's look at the collection of notes that we can do our own improvisation with. So let's look at our note selection here. We have this. Let's learn this as kind of our scale shape or chord tone shape. Usually I talk about that kind of stuff. Well, here's just our selection of notes, we should call it. it happens to be a B flat pentatonic scale, just a little piece of it there. Okay, so those are the notes you're gonna play over the B flat seven chord. And when you go to E flat seven, we're gonna change just this note down a half step. And now we have, even though this note here is not in the melody, we're gonna include it in our improvisation note selection here. So we have, for B flat seven and we have for E flat seven, okay? And that alone is something like the first, definitely the first step to do. Uh, so you can um, create a loop for yourself or just use a backing track in some way or not and just do it by keeping track of switching between those chords. We could loop and now improvise with that. effective that is, it's totally okay that it is insanely limited in what you can do. We want to get a good feel, feel relaxed with it, do some interesting phrasing, which means using the space and how we, you know, the rhythms that we're using, and just be able to feel really comfortable going over that, okay? Now I'll give you notes that we can play over the other two chords here. Over the C minor 7, I would play these four notes. It's still, it's gonna be very limited, but this is so cool to play through a whole tune this way and just get comfortable with hearing the changes move by and you can get way more crazy with all kinds of fun stuff later or licks or whatever. For the F7, use these. And actually, for the F7, we'll do this. So you have four notes for C minor seven and four notes for F7. And then we have everything else we need for all the other chords. So now we can play over the whole tune this way and improvise with just those things. It's okay if it kind of sounds like the melody too of Tenor Madness, but you should be able to get away from that and get creative. something there in that moment it's kind of fun sometimes I do this where I play the common notes on purpose and not the changing notes but playing the changing notes helps us really hear and feel through the changes where things are moving but we don't always have to play those these three notes are common through the whole progression except for F7 so that's kind of fun and it forces us to know where we are in the tune we could play with just those So that is the introductory point to playing in a way that is pretty advanced as a skill, actually following the changes, actually changing our selections of notes, changing the keys, but just limiting our note selections to such a, such a tiny degree. And we're playing a real tune. We're playing, you can play around with the actual melody of a song. Eventually you can work on improvising with more fuller shapes, but the principles are all the same.
I was playing with just chord tones in one position on the guitar, but following the same principles we did in that tiny little spot. For when you're ready for that, you can download my free chord tone arpeggio pack that has all the diagrams of 12 chord types, the chord, all the chord types we need to improvise over any jazz chord progression, and it has all positions of every shape. You can drill them, work on them, and work on even two strings at a time in little four fret uh, positions on the guitar, just like we did in this lesson, and do that in your own way using any chords you like, because now you see from this lesson how effective it is to limit ourselves that way, and then slowly branch out from there. So you can get that for free with the link in the top of the description, or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones. I'm juggling now at the end of my videos, just for fun, why not, right? I post a new lesson video every single week, Hope to see you in the next one. Next week, I'm doing a lesson, uh, kind of an advice lesson, answering a question that someone sent to me about how to keep their practicing consistent. Uh, even the most motivated of us have a hard time with that. And I have a few things to say about it because I've tried so many things for myself. So I'm gonna share my advice on keeping your practice very consistent in my video next week. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing just like I've been doing with my juggling. I've been working on reversing this. Whoa. Maybe I'll update you on the tricks that I'm working on in juggling. Thanks so much. See you in another video soon. Take care.